Hey, what's going on YouTube? Gary here, GZ Duels, here to bring you guys a deck profile of my Evil Swarms for the March 2013 format, especially after uh, when Hidden Arsenal comes out. I know I'm a bit early, but yeah, this is my uh, deck profile. And uh, I am running the Dino variant because Cerseon isn't out, that's why I'm playing Saber Source. But uh, I'll, I'll go through a deck profile first. I have three Evil Swarm Heliotrope, three Saber Saurus, and uh, three Evil Swarm Caster, two Evil Swarm Salamandra, I'll talk about this. 3 uh, Evil Swarm Thunderbird, 2 Rescue Rabbit, 2 Tour Guide Allure Darkness, Dark Hole, 2 Forbidden Dress, um, Heavy Storm, 3 Infestation Pandemic, 2 Mystical Space Typhoon, uh, 1 Reinforcement of the Army, 2 Bottomless Trap Hole, 2 Compulse, uh, 2 Fiendish Chain, 2 Macrocosmos, uh, the Solemn Duo, and lastly we have The Huge Revolution is Over. For the extra deck, we have a Abyss Dweller, Diamond Dara Wolf, uh, Bahamut, 2 Evil Swarm Ophion, 1 Evil Swarm uh, Ouroboros, Doka, Lagia, uh, Cowboy, Pearl, <clears throat> uh, Levier, uh, Maestro, Shockmaster, uh, Black Ship of Corn, and the Wind Up Zemes. For the side deck, we have the third MST, the two Prohibitions, uh, one soul, uh, two Soul Taker, two Spell Shattering Arrow, uh, two Deck Devastation Virus, three Eradicator Epidemic Virus, uh, the third Macrocosmos, and the two Mind Crush. So let me first talk about why I'm running the Dino variant. As I said, Cerseon does not come out in the Hidden Arsenal 7. That's why uh, without Cerseon, you can't run a pure Dino build. And um, <clears throat> this goes in conjunction with Salamandra. Salamandra is an Evil Swarm monster, but it's a Dinosaur-type Evil Swarm monster. And its effect is actually quite decent. Uh, besides the fact that it has decent attack at 1850, it can uh, potentially boost up its attack to uh, 2450, which is quite sizable. And uh, if your opponent has a Thunder King, you know, if you don't have Heliotrope, which can run over Thunder King, you can just beat it with Salamandra. Uh, it's a good out. It's a good one card out to a problem to this deck. <clears throat> and also, if you see that it's an Evil Storm monster, it has unity with Infestation Pandemic. So first turn, rather than summoning, if you draw Sabersaurus and... Uh, Evil Swarm uh, Salamandra, you can summon the Salamandra first and then set the Pandemic Virus, sorry, uh, Infestation Pandemic, then, uh, you know, if they try to Compulse, they try to Bottomless, they try to do all that stuff, uh, your Evil Swarm uh, Salamandra would be saved, so it's actually quite good. And also, since it's an Evil Swarm monster, it definitely has unity with Caster, so if you Normal Summon Caster, you can Normal Summon again Salamandra, and therefore you can go for Ophion as well. It just opens up the play with this one card. Uh, also, because of the six, uh, the six vanilla monsters we run the tour guide. Uh, of course, there's no Night Assailant. There's also no um, Mimic level three. Uh, it's just you know irrelevant. You just need the tour guide to go into the Levier. That's why like I don't even run that many rank threes. I only run uh, Levier and Zemes when I need it. <clears throat> so that's it for the monsters. I want to talk about how good Allure of Darkness is. Definitely, uh, because you're playing. Evil Swarms, you definitely should run uh, Allure Darkness. It speeds up the deck, it helps you draw into Rescue Rabbit, it helps you draw into your Tour Guide. And uh, I feel like that's what Dino Rabbit is really missing. That's why they have to run things like uh, Karkar D. But um, Karkar D has to force you to skip your turn and you can't special summon that turn. And uh, also if you run something like Pot of Duality, which I don't run, you also cannot special summon that turn. So it sets you back a turn, even if you get the key piece that you need. I feel like uh, Allure Darkness gets you that speed and uh, gives you minimal restrictions. And sometimes, if you banish these dark monsters, you can basically get them back with Levier. And uh, I've had games where, you know, I had I had used Levier, and I brought back a Salamandra, and I went for a Lagia. So it's not that bad. Uh, okay, um, that's nothing else for me to talk about. Definitely, Infestation Pandemic at 3 is uh, basically the best. If you draw it, it's always live, it's always good. It gives you that added security that when you attack, you run into a mirror force, um, you're basically not going to get stopped. And that's why I only run three, <coughs> sorry, two MST because I feel like uh, Infestation Pandemic allows you to, you know, run into traps sometimes. Uh, also, I want to talk about Forbidden Dress. It's kind of bad, really. But uh, I can see why people run it, and I've seen sometimes I've had instances where Forbidden Dress really saved my life. Forbidden Dress basically prevents your Ophion from being destroyed by card effects, well, monster effects, uh, which is like the one thing that they fear because uh, Infestation Pandemic can save Ophion from spell or traps, but not monster effects. So if they set Raiko, basically your mess, your day is not going to go very well. So uh, yeah, Forbidden Dress is not bad. But other than that, it's actually like it misses timing. If your opponent tries to compulse you and then you chain Forbidden Dress, it actually doesn't work because 
you know, just misses timing already. Uh, definitely also, uh, I want to talk about ma uh, Macrocosmos, definitely a good meta call um, against uh, basically everything, <laughs> against uh, mermails, against fire fists, against uh, incarnate dragons, you know, Macrocosmos is pretty good. <clears throat> okay, so let me talk about the uh, side deck, because the extra deck is pretty much standard. You run the evil swarm monsters and you run the dinos. Dinosaur monsters and you run the staple exceeds. So let me talk about the side deck. I side the third MST because <clears throat> you definitely need an MST sometimes against people who run um, Royal Decree on you. I know some mermail players are starting to run Royal Decree. And sometimes just for that uh, tanky, you just want to MST that tanky, you want to MST your opponent's uh, sphere. Uh, especially when they activate sphere first and then you chain MST to it, then their sphere doesn't resolve. <coughs> Prohibition. Prohibition is for those uh, those rogue matchups as well. You know, you can side it in against the meta as well. Uh, I feel like Evil Swarm has a terrible time with the with the rogue matchups, especially when your opponent plays some uh, Medolches and stuff, and your Ophion doesn't stop anything because most of their monsters, except for Pudding Sass, which I think I don't think uh, I don't think Medolche players should run Pudding Sass, but that's another video for another time. Uh, definitely, it's not going to be that effective. So, Evil Swarms. Definitely suck against uh, uh, level four, level four, you know, decks, uh, hero exceed, you know. So prohibition definitely is really good because uh, you can basically call their ace card in rogue matches. Uh, definitely every deck has like one of those key cards. You can just call it, and uh, yeah. Uh, if you face up, face against mermails, and you know that the only thing in their deck can hurt you is something like Marksman, uh, sorry, not Marksman, Heavy Infantry, then you just call Prohibition Heavy Infantry, play Macro Cosmos, and then <laughs> GG. Uh, okay, so the two Soul Taker, I also find that this deck ru runs into a lot of trouble if your opponent already has a big monster on the field. So you just Soul Taker, and then you go for Ophion, and you lock down their deck. Uh, the two Spell Shattering Arrow, it's, a, it's just basically against... Uh, Fire Fist, especially when the three axis Fire Fist come out, especially when they have more s continuous spell uh, fire formation cards. Espe instead of Tanky, they have Tanky, Tensu. They have that card that's like an MST that targets like a set card that you can't activate in response to. Uh, spell Shattering Arrow just deals with that. It's actually a pretty good card. And I don't want to run a uh, Fairy Wind because I play continuous traps like Macro Cosmos as well. Uh, Fairy Wind destroys all spell of traps. Uh, Spell Shattering Arrow just uh, destroys all face up spell cards. So uh, the two deck devastation riders. The only reason it's at two is because it isn't as good as it is used to be. It's not. It's not going to hurt many decks. Like um, it doesn't hurt Fire Fist at all. So definitely, you know, just at two. The three Epidemic Virus is a good call because uh, with Priestess, with the Prophecy deck, with um, a whole bunch of other decks that have like a lot of spells. If if you're facing against Dino Rabbits, the Mirror Match, or anything, uh, they run a lot of spell traps, and uh, it's definitely good. And Ophion is a target for both of these viruses. And the third Macro Cosmos, because you know you run into Mermails and you run into those uh, Incarnate Dragons, and the third Macro Cosmos just allows you to get it faster. And lastly, we have the two Mind Crush because Mind Crush is always good against uh, those cards that reveal in the hand and start a chain. Alright, so that's all I have to say about this deck.